Hello, and welcome to another edition of Kevin's Rambles, starring that intrepid explorer, Kevin Hall. Let's see what Kevin's up to today. Hello, Kevin here, and I've got Cynthia with me. Hello. Well, we've taken a real flyer here. <laughs> we have, haven't we? Um, we've stopped at Fish Fishbourne um, Parish Church, and it's St. Peter's and St. Mary. Yeah. And we're filming inside first, um, very sunny outside, but there's a gentleman out there with three or four dogs. Three little dogs. Three little dogs, and one of them he has to keep shouting to all. But, <laughs> so we thought we'd start inside. But we've got no information about this at all. We've been somewhere else, but we thought we'd try here. And we've turned all the lights on. But it, unfortunately, it looks as if the church is a little bit um, worse for wear in places, just there, where all the paint is flaking off the walls. We've just come in the west end door, and just above us we've got um, some uh, rather lovely stained glass windows which are set right into the wall. So Cynthia's actually found some information. And, it's, I, uh, and I can't read any of that because the <laughs> print is too, too small. Um, the church was built between 1243 and 1254. The original church may have been the chancel only, with the nave and bell cot probably added in the 14th century. After 1821, more additions were made, the north transept, the porch, and then the south aisle. In 1973, a new block was added to the north for the choir vestry and storage space. Oh, right, okay. Well, we will try and find out some other information, which we'll put in the description. So let's have a, just have a look round here. And just inside the door, we've got this rather lovely font it's very decorative and i don't know whether cynthia's got any no, there's nothing about the nothing font. about the font other than it has blessed water inside it's got blessed water inside okay but look at that that is rather stunning beautifully carved as i said but just there we got a bell which assumed assumably was in the in the bell tower and we've got one sally just to our side here a couple of rather lovely uh, memorial boards just here and there is a layout there but looks like the layout of the church so we're in the nave at the moment and everything is painted the ceiling and the, some of the walls but not the column uh, stonework itself the columns themselves on the base are round and there are four, four columns. So let's just have a wander down through the nave towards the, the chancel. And we're pretty sure it must be the epitome because it's still got um, the Christmas decorations up and, and uh, the tree here. And then we've got the manger there. But I've got, we've got a, a piscina there, or possibly even an ombre in the wall, which would be the south wall. And it's just behind the altar, plain wooden altar. It's got stonework, which is rather nice. And then this magnificent, look at this. Isn't that a lovely stained glass window? Beautiful. Again, look. Poor um, paintwork coming off the walls just there. And it's got black and cream tiles on the floor. And those are the sort of tiles, if they're polished up, would be rather lovely. But then we just pan around slowly. And we've got these benches here. Again, must be pretty old, I would have thought, because of the, the way they're carved. And then we've got a lectern just here. And the organ. And if I move over this way to the, the south uh, aisle or transept here, again, lovely stained glass window on the end. Let me try and get a bit closer to that. Just there, look at that, isn't that lovely? 
and an interesting little window right up the top. And it's got a pale pink colour to it. It's, it's not a particularly big church. But again, we mentioned the feel of a church that we were in earlier, um, of how it felt so light and airy. This is light because of the lights we've put on. Let's have a look into, into here. We've got a, a, a banner, St. Peter and St. Mary uh, banner of Fishbourne there. And then we've got some plain um, leaded light windows here. Rather impressive lectern here, which has got an eagle at the top. Okay, panning round. And we're looking at, again, plain walls, but a lot of damp, unfortunately, in the walls. And you can see, actually, over there where it's, the water's got in, it's running down. Such a shame. I've just noticed on these, on these pillars here, this bit here is just plain stone going round, as is the ones behind me. But then when you get over to this side, they've got this rather lovely pattern on it here. Look at that, almost like a fleur-de-lis, I think. Upside down and upright, and a, like the third, third fleur-de-lis there. But again, up at the top of the west entrance, We've got a, a rather interesting little window up there. The, all the woodwork in the timbers in the roof have been painted black, which I don't think I've ever seen black timbers before. But I'm just trying to see if the style of the timber work is the same in the nave as it is in the side aisles. Yeah, uh, well, a lot more timbers in, in the um, north and south aisles. And again, another little window set in the wall up there behind that beam. There are some brass plaques on the walls as you look round, but again, not that many. But rather interesting, not a bad little church really, but a different feel to the last one we were in. Well, Cynthia and I are actually heading back into the chancel because she's found out on the information sheet about these two chairs and they're known as Glastonbury chairs. Yeah, a chair of this style is known to have existed since the early Middle Ages. It was named a Glastonbury chair in the 19th century because it was discovered that a similar chair was made for the last abbot of Glastonbury back in the 16th century. Well. They are rather lovely. The very, the, very ornate, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, beautifully carved. Just look, I'll get a bit of a close-up on here. Just look at that. The workmanship in these... When you look at some of the things that they, they are carved nowadays with the modern technology, lasers and everything else, is, is quite amazing. But when you see chairs of this age that have been very ornately carved, in the olden styles, it's just as good as modern day stuff. Wonderful. But a rather interesting window here, I've just noticed, look, we've got partial um, stained glass there and the rest is frosted glass. And I'm wondering if Cynthia's got anything about that there. I can't see anything. No, there's nothing there, is there? The only window they mentioned is that one. The, the east window, window. yeah. We'll try and find out a bit more about it. Um, as I said, we'll put it in the description. But there are some interesting little points in it in, um, to, to look at here. But um, we'll have a wander around the outside in a minute and uh, see what we can find there. And just here we've got this, um, the Rectors of Fishbourne. And they go from 1263 
um, right up to 2010, and that is Maria Wickens by the looks of it. And the first one, I can't read the first one, but the one in 1520 was Ralph de Wallingham. Ralph spelled spell R-A-L-F. Well, Cynthia and I have now come outside of the church and I'm on the west end, this is the west entrance door, and you can see the, the windows from the outside there, built of stone, it's under a tiled roof. But let's just have a wander around the outside of the church. I'll go down underneath this tree here so that we can try and get a better view of the, um, the church. Here we are on the south side and we've got a wooden um, tower, if you would call it that. Oh, that's rather interesting there, look. We've got three rows of stone tiles on the bottom part of the, the roof, and the rest is uh, clay, clay tiles. And then it's stonework until you get to the bottom here and you've got um, the, um, and I can't remember the name of it, <laughs> the gully, I mean. You got the gully down through here. There we are, look at those tiles, those stone tiles, they're huge. And then you got the flints, I forgot to mention the flints all the way along the bottom. So this is the oop, the east end, put my foot down a big hole. The little openings you see on the roof, on the tiles, that is for an air vent, they are all air vents, and there's eight of them on this bit of roof. We've got the S-shaped tie bar, just here. Now the, the rod will pass right the way through the church. And this is at the east end, or it should do. Although this is by the altar. So I'd be very surprised if it comes. It does, there we go. It does pass through part of that church it ties it all together and once these tie bars are gone through this end and the other end will be threaded and the, the nut will be put on and pull it tight but if you look it's almost in the shape of a serpent there the way that's done but this is rendered and it's a little bit of um, grit in there quite sharp sand and of course you've got bits of stone poking through. And then we come round this side. And this is pebble dashed. Um, or another terminology for it is stucco. And my great grandfather that lived in Hucknall in Nottinghamshire was a builder, Charles Hall. Um, and he was well known in Hucknall for building houses that had stucco or pebble dash on the outside so if we come around this way and we've got um, a yew tree here and these are obviously um, cremations people are buried here with crem cremations or ashes so let me just come around this way a little bit further and this is an entrance to um, I would assume um, like a kitchen area perhaps so that's like a ex little extension. And then you can see, again, under a tiled roof, we've got the, the weather vane at the top there with a cockerel on the top. And the cockerel is facing due west. So let me just take a little bit of a wander around the churchyard. And this is the main notice board here for St Peter and St Mary. And the Reverend is the Reverend Canon Moyer Wickens. And that's the one that was here in 2010, I think it was. But as you can see, a beautiful sunny day. But as I said earlier, this was just a, a quick stop 
on our travels today just to see what we could we could pick up we didn't think about coming here um, so we've got no information as I said earlier but hopefully you know this will come across okay to you so the usual sort of thing please follow like and subscribe to Kevin's rambles that'd be very much appreciated well uh, as I said earlier a little bit of an impromptu stop we didn't come prepared for the Fishbourne Church at all um, hang on a bit of school St Peter and St Mary that's where we are so we have finished uh, St Peter and St Mary and I think we're going to be heading back home now I head think north. so head north that's right yes yeah, so this will be Kevin and Cynthia from St Peter and St Mary of Fishbourne we'll see you on the next one bye bye for now bye bye bye, -bye. Well, we hope you enjoyed that edition of Kevin's Rambles. If you did, please do give a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment. And do consider subscribing. That way you can keep up to date with Kevin and his adventures in the future. Thanks for watching.